News first, news live with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to Newsline Live. Uh, and as we always do, we're broadcasting from the News First studios in Dorset Street in Colombo. Uh, Parliament's been very busy today. They've been discussing uh, the 20th Amendment. There are other things too that's going on. We had a uh, member of Parliament has finally been arrested and we've had a underworld figure who's uh, uh, been killed while in the care of the police and so on. So uh, there's a lot of news, but I believe that uh, uh, public concern uh, along with COVID-19, of course, is uh, the potential change being proposed uh, the 20th uh, Amendment. To discuss that, we've got a senior attorney at law, Mr. J. M. Vijay Bandara, right here with us uh, in the studio. Very good evening to you, Mr. Vijay Bandara. Uh, thank you very much for being on the, uh, on the program. I'd like to ask you, what now? The Supreme Court determination uh, is now officially being made in parliament and so we, we sort of know what's going on so what next yes initially government uh, submitted and gathered its proposal for 20th amendment subsequently interested people citizen group petitioned to supreme court and they argued pros and cons of the proposed amendment and supreme court has given its determination and communicated to the speaker and today the speaker has informed the parliament the determination of the supreme court accordingly uh, supreme court has determined for me mm. 19th amendment has enhanced people's legislative power right. and thereby enhanced the sovereignty okay. by introducing uh, four and a half year lifetime for the parliament without any disturbances whatsoever from the women fancies of the president and then uh, 90th amendment also has introduced that president's actions are challengeable before supreme court by way of fundamental right application uh, observing that provision supreme court has expressed the view that that provision contained in 19 amendment has enhanced the people's fundamental right now if you take the supreme law of this country article 3 provide that sovereignty vested with the people it cannot be restricted inalienable rights and then sovereignty rights has five elemental rights those are set out in article 4 one is executive power of the people two legislative power of the people three judicial power of the people those three are exercised by the people through representative le elected or appointed through courts mm -hmm. and then other two elements the fundamental right and franchise are with, always with the people those are not alien inalien those are inalienable therefore those rights cannot be touched by the parliament all what can any legislator do for that matter is to express the view of respect, protect and ensure those rights. In line of those things, Supreme Court determination by summarize what they say is the entirety of the 20th amendment as it is gazetted could be passed by parliament only two-third majority and Supreme Court has stated four exceptions. Yeah. One is the president duties are laid down by article 33 of the existing constitution right including his duty to ensure pre and fair election in consultation with the election commission so 20th amendment proposed to delete that clause entirely and supreme court determined if it is to be deleted it could be passed on not only two-third majority it could be passed two-third plus a referendum so a referendum is a must it's a must right okay and then it's come to immunity of the president you yeah. know now the president's try to pardon is being questioned before the supreme court now in pending cases yeah uh, one time former president maitri pal sen has pardoned the murder convict yeah and it has been challenged and court has also issued an interim relief also unfortunately here is not more in the country yeah but case is pending right though 
Therefore, the Supreme Court determination is that that 90th Amendment introduced uh, people's right to challenge the President's Act is an enhancement of people's fundamental right. Therefore, if it is to be removed or amended, it could be done not only two-third but two-third plus referendum. So, by this uh, sort of determination where uh, the Supreme Court says that if the people's um, rights have been enhanced, yes. then um, if you want to go into reverse yes. and reduce that, then you do need a referendum of the people. Exactly. What, 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 yeah, that is very important issue. Uh, rights are always best with the people. Yeah. That is what uh, provided by Article 3 of the Constitution. So, Parliament can express that about that right. It is there. For that, there is no requirement for a referendum. Right. If Parliament want to restrict or curtail the people's rights, for example, if the uh, 20th Amendment itself, if you take, you cannot petition against the President even by a fundamental right application. Yeah. If that is passed, then it's amount to curtailment of or restriction of people's people. fundamental right. And therefore, you need a two-third plus, plus a referendum. A referendum. Okay. Yes. And the Parliament also, it is very important now, Parliament, we throughout 1978 up to date, yeah. we had two separate elections conducted by public funds, yeah. presidential election, one single person elected as a president to head the uh, executive. Then we have the parliament, separate parliament election, elected for five years. Yeah. Then there, there is this concern had been there throughout 1978 constitution, whether president according to his whim and fancy and without accountable to any other organs of government, dissolve the parliament. Mm. This question was addressed by 90th amendment and say that up to four and a half years from the date of election, unless parliament requests so by resolution, president cannot dissolve parliament. Right. This issue was raised before Supreme Court, you uh, remember the famous uh, constitutional, I say it's a coup, uh, 2018 October 26. Some people say it's a crisis. Yeah, crisis, we'll say crisis. Uh, then in that, that was challenge. You know, yeah. people had the right to challenge yeah. when president decided to dissolve parliament, remove the parliament. That was very important. Very uh, important. Right. That shows the people's fundamental right. That shows the independence of the judiciary. That shows the check and balance between these three organs of government. Yeah. And Supreme Court finally held president cannot violate the constitution. If president violate the constitution, there should be some uh, solution. There should there be a should check. Be check. And also there should be a remedy for the people. Yeah. So that remedy had been introduced by 19th Amendment and the present Supreme Court determination also has expressed the view that that introduction, the restriction is an enhancement of the people's sovereignty rights. Can I ask you this then? Um, now it's always said that when you look at the Constitution you one must look at the intent of the, uh, the different articles all read together. Yeah. Um, so in that respect since 1978, it appears that the intent has always been to give the president uh, the right to um, to, can, to to call for elections or to uh, to prorogue parliament and so on at his will. At his will, after one year. Yes. So it took all those years, and then under it is only under the 19th that. The, the one year was taken out yes. and replaced by a minimum term of four and a half years. Yes. And even prior to that, there was another attempt of uh, introducing a new 90th Amendment under President, I believe, if I recollect correctly, Chandrika Bandarana Kumar Tunga, where mm. Supreme Court held that this limitation can't be one year, it should be more than that. In mm. any event, this constitution is a document which we accept as a supreme law of the country. It should be it, according to the constitutionalism, the meaning of that is that constitution does not recognize any person or authority who can act above the law, mm -hmm. who can act above the law or who can uh, disregard the provisions of the constitution and act according to his women pants. Even the present 20th determination, Supreme Court says that we don't accept any unfettered uh, power. So what the Supreme Court is saying this time in its determination is that um, if you are trying to create a different class of people who will not be 
accountable to the people and will be above the law, then you can't do that unless you have a referendum of the people. Quite so, yes. They have it's very clear. Very clear. So, the Supreme Court is of the view that no one can be above the law and have unfettered powers unless and until the public voted to national referendum. That is so. That is because the entire thing, some from the government quarters, they may argue that Supreme Court has other than four uh, provision that we discussed, all other had been permitted to be amended and passed by parliament only two thirds. Right. And they may be joyful about that. But if you uh, read through the lines of the Supreme Court judgment, what they say is ultimately any action of the president is amenable and it should be amenable if you are not going uh, under the present context under fundamental right jurisdiction. Right. If president appoint judges of Supreme Court, if president appoint uh, any other uh, head of state, uh, commander, anything other than declaring war is not uh, subject to review of the Supreme Court, yeah. war and peace, but other action like appointing all the conduct in respect of appointment of the higher state officials, mm. those are amenable. Then that, what is the meaning of that? That president will not exercise yeah. unfettered discretion. Right. It is always subject to review. Thereby, there is a check and balance of, of these three organs. If parliament is permitted, even to after two and a half, uh, if president is permitted, even after two and a half years, to dissolve parli the parliament, yeah. that means then, Express provision of the constitution says parliament's life is five years. There, there are express stipulation in the constitution. Yeah. So then president can override by dissolving parliament. Yes. So that but is uh, again the spirit of the constitutionalism and also supremacy of parliament concept. Now as we approach a break, I'd just like to uh, say to you that um, let's discuss why it is that the government is so focused on the 20th amendment and passing that in light of their previously stated position that they want to introduce a new constitution to Sri Lanka, for Sri Lanka. So we'll discuss that after the break. In the meantime, don't go away. After all, this is Newsline Live. News First, Newsline with Faraz Organized criminal gang member Mark Adure Madush killed in a shootout. Speaker announces the Supreme Court determination on the 20th Amendment in Parliament. Four articles in need of a public referendum. Vimal Veerawansa continues to oppose the article that permits dual citizens into Parliament. Discussions underway about future steps with the Communist Party. US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to visit Sri Lanka on the 28th. Quarantine curfew imposed in Kuliapitiya, Pannala, Giriulla and Dumbala Surya until further notice. First Newsline with Faraz Shahutali.
and welcome back to Newsline y, uh, Live and we are in conversation with Mr. J.M. Vijay Bandara, Senior Attorney of Law. Now, um, Mr. Vijay Bandara, am I right in thinking that by certain parts of this 20th Amendment that the powers of Parliament or the supremacy of Parliament is being proposed to be diminished? Yes. Uh, now, the, when it's uh, so regarding the term of parliament, yeah. uh, in the present form, it is four and a half years, and president has no power so held by Supreme Court as well to dissolve. Then, parliament can act as an independent institution, supreme with it, within its power, yeah. not supreme over any other organs. Right. Parliament should be supreme within its power of legislative authority. Then, executive should be supreme without subject to any undue control by even by parliament or even by judiciary. That right. is why the constitution provides president can declare war and peace. No entity could review that, could question that. Okay. That is his area of ex implementing the policies of a government. Then in this instance, if government genuinely intending to introduce well deliberated new constitution, Hmm. I am fully 100% for that. Yeah. For that, they have already set in motion certain process. They have appointed an expert committee. That committee has already called for uh, views of the public. Then public has a right to submit uh, within one month or one and a half month or so. Hmm. Then this thing will be submitted and deliberated. Thereafter, draft has to be come into it. Then that draft also should be submitted to the people and the civil society, parliament, various political parties, so they can discuss and propose uh, changes. But, there seems to me in my mind, yes. a small gundu, and that is this. Now, the proposed term, the minimum term, before the president can uh, dissolve parliament, uh, was has been proposed as two and a half years. And the Supreme Court says that uh, no, you can't do it for one year, but if you amend it to two and a half years, then you can do it without a national referendum. Yes. Okay, so this new constitution may take over two and a half years. So technically, if the president is unhappy with what is being proposed, closer to that two and a half years, because I don't know if a constitution can be done overnight yeah because the people will have to be consulted and it's a long process so what happens then uh, it appears to me that the president can then say well you know what i'm going to dissolve parliament yes assuming if this constitution 20th amendment in the present form plus the proposed amendment to two and a half years is passed by parliament to uh, adopting by two third then after two and a half years there is no restriction whatsoever for the executive president to dissolve parliament. Assuming that if 25 people are deliberating and then a majority or say they are unanimous in adopting a new constitution because they are representing the people, various quarters of people, various ethnic groups, various political parties, the southern province, north province, and so many. So parliament is the institution which is being represented by all quarters. So if all are unanimous, still a president being one person, if he decide, no, I don't like this. Assuming that, I'm not saying that this president... No, we're only talking about the possibility. Ex yes, then he can dissolve the parliament, then entire exercise will become futile and nugatory. And therefore we'll never get, then, then we'll have to start again. Exactly, that is why, that is why what is the rationale for this government, for their mighty hurry to introduce this 20th amendment at this stage, when they themselves say in six years, six months time, they will introduce a new constitution. So wh why president need uh, immunity from uh, court jurisdiction for six months to achieve what? So your legal mind uh, raises a sort of raises your antenna, and you you are getting suspicious. Always we tend to we, we, we don't believe anything. We only believe the institution and the constitutional concept. We we are believing in those things. If individuals are trusted, of course, I am not saying that A or B is not trustworthy, but no. nobody should be trusted for that matter. The Supreme Law should clearly provide yeah. the manner 
uh, under which particular elected organs of government should be uh, should exercise its powers mm -hmm. so then you can't uh, keep any room for uh, you know to believe or trust if, uh, if a will be trusted then b will not be if the constitution provision can control a and b both that is what is the expectation of constitutionalism and supremacy of parliament mm -hmm. now then um, what do you uh, what next now they 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 they're debating this in parliament and so on uh, what remedy is available to the people uh, yeah of course now uh, parliament is bound ethically as well as legally to adhere to the determination of the supreme court and also adhere to those proposed uh, amendment to the already published gazette where supreme court has expressed certain views if these amendment are adopted then uh, need for referendum will not be arisen therefore parliament has to go on the basis of the determination of supreme court they have no authority legally and no ethically to make any substantial changes to what is determined by the supreme court but certain things are on the card opposition say they will introduce about more than 50 amendments to the existing and also government has already expressed the view that they are going to propose certain adjustment to the already published gazette this thing could be done but within the spirit of the determination given by the supreme court no substantial changes should be made mm. but other thing uh, we have to be mindful that if once parliament pass any laws there are no provision under our constitutional law to review the parliamentary conduct mm -hmm. that is one of the allegation against the 19th amendment as well there are certain provision uh, which some quarters says were never discussed and those were introduced at the committee stage yes they do say that. <laughs> yes so that that is the menace behind the 19th amendment other than that there are so many good provision in it but we hope for the best that uh, this government will not make same mistake again they don't repeat same mistake again they will adhere to the direction or the advice given by supreme court in the determination and also they will uh, respect the public views including the Mahanayaka terrorists, other religious leaders, they express so many dissatisfaction about some of these provisions. Of course, as I at the commencement said, if any right to be enhanced, certainly parliament is free to adopt any new changes Anything. to the existing. But curtail or restriction, it is 100% and clearly no. What is in the current context in with the proposed uh, 20th Amendment? What about the uh, I, what about an impeachment of the president? You know, politically, <coughs> the law provides the procedure for impeachment. You want know, you know what happening right now? The two two twenty five members of the parliament, ex, say the government members, they are scared to talk and how they address their electorate at least single lecture or public rally saying that we are going to adopt this 20th amendment these are the plus these are the things that we want to do for the people none mm -hmm. there are people called that viat maga so many intellectual were elected people with very high expectation expecting that they would serve the public but nobody talks mm. very sad situation that's constitution amendment is you are dealing with the supreme law of the country Mm. entire body of the government governance mm. so but nobody talks that 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 shows that power of the president even current contest can prevail over the liberty of parliament members if this amendment is passed as it, as it is proposed right now that will worsen the situation between the pa parliament and president <coughs> they will be scared it is seen right now nobody talks so what, 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 then what is the purpose what is the expectation legitimate expectation of the people when you vote at a parliamentary election and you elect by casting your preferential vote as well that you represent me you represent this district or this electorate and you represent us you talk for us you talk for our uh, community but if they are dead silent window silent over this amendment 
nobody talk nobody talk again so nobody talk favor i mean it is the duty of the member of parliament all 25 for that matter to talk with the people eh, involve and engage in dialogue with the people and gather the people's views mm. and then submit people the parliament at this debate how many you have seen come forward and talk regarding pros and cons of this uh, proposed uh, hurriedly done amendment are, are you suggest are you suggesting that some people in parliament have no backbone yes i do say so so not some most of the people the majority yes and They, that is that spells bad news for sri lanka and its people throughout last 72 years yes now you say the dead trapped and all this so many government control uh, govern the country but we attract and you see same people some people voted for 18th 17th 19th and 20th what is the police how can we read them the 19th m has power then somebody says that is the you know that is the bad impact of the existence of the executive president all us care that executive president because that is the source where you can get benefit like minister portfolios and then the state minister deputy minister other thing so most of the politicians who are elected by the people they are not concerned about the people then they are always mindful what can i get through this crisis uh, mr jm vijay bandara thank you very much you've given us a lot of food for thought that's the way it was on newsline live tonight take care have a wonderful evening ahead of you and of course as always god bless you Thank <laughs> you.